I have started to run my trains by Wi-Fi. Today I'm going to show you how I'm doing it. I'm Roy Smith. Glad you could join me. I can now run my trains by Wi-Fi and I want to show you how because you may want to try this setup as well. To do it, I'm using this device called a Wi-Fi Tracks WFD30 NCE CAB bus Wi-Fi interface which works with NCE DCC systems. And I'm using the device with an app on my iPhone called Y Throttle. First, let's talk about the WFD30 and then we'll talk about the Y Throttle app. Before doing all of that, I want to say that I'm not going to do a product review in this video and I'm certainly not going to offer you a bunch of technical specifications. I just want to tell you about my experience with the WFD30. I'm going to show you how I connected it with my NCE system and how I use it with Y Throttle to run my trains. The WFD30 module is made in Australia by Wi-Fi Tracks Model Science. I will put a link to their website down below. It was developed with the assistance and approval of NCE. Now, as I said, I use my iPhone as a wireless throttle. There's a similar app for Android phones called Engine Driver, but I don't have an Android phone, so I won't be able to talk about Engine Driver. And this is important. When using a WFD30, I don't need to connect my computer with JMRI running on it to my power cab to run my trains wirelessly, as I did in the past. Nope. No more JMRI to run my trains wirelessly. Before I talk about connecting the WFD30 and how I use it, I want to thank a couple of people. I want to thank John Tanzillo for suggesting the WFD30. John uses it with his NCE Power Pro system. I will put a link to John's video about it down below. I want to thank Iron Planet Hobbies where I was able to buy this product online. I will put the link to Iron Planet Hobbies down below as well. And I really want to thank Steve Shrimpton, owner of Wi-Fi Tracks Model Science, which produces the WFD30. He helped me to solve a connection problem that I initially had with his product. I will tell you more about that a little later. All right, let's talk about connecting the WFD30. Making the connections was so easy and so quick that even I could do it. In fact, it took me far, far longer to read the instruction manual than it did to actually connect the device. The WFD30 comes in a package like this. These are the instructions. And this is the mounting hardware. As you can see, I have mounted the WFD30 on the benchwork close to my power cab. The flat cable for the power cab remains connected, as always, to the left socket on the power cab power panel or a PCP panel. I connect one end of the coiled cable that came with my power cab to the right socket on my PCP panel and the other end of the coiled cable to either one of the two sockets on the WFD30. Then I turn on the power. The red and blue LEDs quickly light up. The red LED tells me that I have power in the WFD30. 
and the blue LED shows that the WFD-30 has a physical connection to the power cab system. There is also a green LED which flickers intermittently whenever there is Wi-Fi activity. Now, when I first tried to connect the WFD-30 to my power cab, I had a problem. The blue LED only lit sometimes at first, and I could run my trains wirelessly only when it was lit. After that, it wouldn't light up at all, and that meant that I couldn't run my trains wirelessly at all. It was frustrating, so I sent an email about the problem to Steve Shrimpton, owner of Wi-Fi Tracks Model Science. Steve responded at once, offering several explanations for the problem. For example, he suggested that one of the plugs on my NCE flat cable might be damaged. I checked the flat cable and, sure enough, the little clip on one of the plugs had broken off. As a result, the plug wouldn't snap snugly into any socket. I could still run my trains using the power cab, but I couldn't run them wirelessly because there was no Wi-Fi connection between my throttle and on my iPhone and the WFD-30. So I ordered a new NCE flat cable, hooked it up, and immediately the blue LED lit up. Steve had offered several other suggestions, but replacing the flat cable with the broken plug fixed the problem. Now I could run my trains wirelessly once again. And let me tell you, I was one happy model railroader. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for this amazing product and thanks for your help in solving a connection problem. Okay, up to now I've been talking about the WFD-30, but I also need to talk about Y-Throttle. Y-Throttle is an app which I downloaded from the App Store onto my iPhone. As you can see, I have both the free or so-called light version of the app, which I used in the past to run my trains through JMRI on my MacBook Pro. And as you can also see, I have now downloaded the full-blown, regular version of the app, which costs $10. Let me show you how all of this works. My power cab is turned on, and the red and blue LEDs on the WFD-30 are both lit. On my iPhone, I select the correct Wi-Fi connection. Then I open Y Throttle. I'm going to run Steam Locomotive 844, so I type in 844 on the address page and hit Set. Then I go to the throttle page in the app. Now I can use any of the standard functions that I desire. For example, the light, bell, and sound. And then I begin to accelerate forward using the throttle. It's very responsive. And then reverse. It's that simple. I love it. Now, if you don't like touch screens and prefer throttles with physical buttons, you can get a Wi-Fi throttle such as the TCS UWT100. I will probably get one, and when I do, I will tell you about it. So I have been running my trains wirelessly by Wi-Fi. But there are a number of other things that I still haven't done in the Y Throttle app. For example, I still haven't created a locomotive roster. I still haven't programmed any accessories such as turnouts. And I still haven't reprogrammed any of the function keys. I will do all of those things eventually. But in the meantime, I've been having tons of fun running my trains with Y Throttle and my WFD-30. It makes me wonder why it took me so long to go wireless. For years, I kept getting tangled up in the cables when I'm trying to follow along my trains. And I couldn't get to the other side of my layout with a cable that's only seven feet long. 
Yes, there are other ways to run your trains wirelessly, but I'm really pleased with my WFD30 and Y throttle. I suspect that as time goes on, we model railroaders will operate our trains and everything else on our layouts more and more using Wi-Fi. Now, be sure to click over here to see my layout and trains running on it. As always, I'm Roy Smith. Until next time, happy railroading.